The flares land near Fields Park, Escuela Key Elementary School, and on North George Mason Drive. Additional officers arrive on scene and attempt to make contact with the suspect inside the residence, but receive no response. After speaking with a neighboring unit, officers access their patio and try to establish contact with the suspect. The suspect continues to fire flares and officers provide commands to stop. Arlington County Police, stop shooting the flares! <laughs> Mr. Yu, can you hear me? Mr. Yu! Over a 25-minute period, the sound of 41 discharged flares are captured on officer body-worn camera video. The final flare is fired at 5.09 p.m. Despite repeated attempts by officers, the suspect refuses to communicate and remains barricaded inside the residence. At 6 p.m., officers evacuate the neighboring unit in the duplex. The suspect is believed and later confirmed to be the only individual remaining on the property. Over the next two hours, officers continued their on-scene investigation and determined police had no prior documented interactions with the suspect. Neighbors tell officers the suspect is reclusive and has recently covered his windows with black trash bags, thrown trash into the backyard from a window, and strewn toilet paper on trees outside the home. Based on the suspect's observed and described erratic behavior and the unpredictable nature of the incident, officers remain concerned for the safety of the community and obtain a search warrant to recover any weapons inside the home. The emergency response team, including negotiators, respond to execute the search warrant at the home. At 8.02 p.m., members of the emergency response team begin using the public address system and sirens on the armored vehicle to communicate with the suspect and direct him to surrender to police. James, Arlington Police, under the front door with your hands up, do it now. We have your building surrounded. We are not leaving. Come to the door now with your hands up and surrender. At 8.10 p.m., after receiving no response from the suspect, officers provide commands to move away from the door as they prepare to breach the entrance with the armored vehicle as an additional effort to establish communication with the suspect. James, this is the Arlington Police Department. We need you to move away from your front door. Move away from your front door. James, this is the Arlington Police Department. We need you to move away from your front door. At 8.11 p.m., the front door of the residence is breached using the armored vehicle. James, stay away from your front door. Stay away from your front door. After the door is breached, gunshots are heard from inside the residence. Despite the ongoing threats to themselves, officers continue to try to engage with the suspect to safely bring him into custody. An additional angle of the home being breached by the armored vehicle and shots being fired from within the home can be seen on the body-worn camera from officers positioned outside the home. As the suspect remains barricaded inside the home, officers deploy non-flammable, less lethal chemical munitions to the residents. The purpose of this deployment is to cause irritation in hopes of compelling the suspect to surrender. After a munition is discharged, officers continue giving commands while providing a period for the suspect to surrender. During this time, officers can hear the suspect yelling inside the home. With the suspect refusing to surrender and no visual inside the home due to the windows being covered with the black trash bags, 
Officers begin repositioning the armored vehicle to a window of the residence. Prior to breaching the window, the home explodes at 8.24 p.m., resulting in a large structure fire. An additional angle of the home explosion is captured on body-worn camera of officers positioned at the back of the home. After confirming the safety of all first responders on scene, officers check on neighbors and evacuate them from their homes. morning of December 5th, after the fire at the home had been extinguished, human remains were recovered at the scene. The office of the chief medical examiner determined the remains were that of the homeowner, 56-year-old James Yu. His cause of death was determined to be thermal injuries and blunt force trauma. Items recovered from the scene include gasoline canisters, two shotguns, a firearm, two flare guns, shotgun magazines, loose shotgun rounds, fired and unfired flares. Fire investigators determined the explosion originated in the basement of the home was intentionally caused by the suspect and involved gasoline and a competent ignition source. The munitions used by police during this incident are verified not to be a competent ignition source for this event. The Arlington County Police and Fire Departments responded to this developing emergency incident with the safety and well-being of the Arlington community as our guiding priority. The collaborative on-scene response by officers assigned to the patrol section, special weapons and tactics team, and crisis negotiators unit demonstrates their professionalism and commitment to public safety despite the ongoing threat to themselves. While no first responders were hospitalized from this incident, in the days and weeks that followed, many sought medical treatment for their injuries sustained from the explosion. This incident highlights Arlington County's preparedness to respond to critical incidents and involved a coordinated public safety response by the Arlington County Fire Department, Department of Public Safety Communications and Emergency Management, Northern Virginia Critical Incident Response Team, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. As you saw in the video, all first responders approached this developing emergency incident with the safety and well-being of the Arlington community as our guiding priority. And this is highlighted by their decision-making and response actions throughout this evolving incident. Throughout the incidents, responding patrol officers members of our and members of our crisis negotiations unit worked to gather intelligence on the occupant of the home in question as well as exhausted all efforts to establish communications with the suspect. This work included trying to contact relatives or anyone that knew Mr. Yu to learn as much as we could about him to ensure we were doing everything possible to bring this incident to a peaceful resolution. As you saw in the video, there were also repeated attempts on scene to contact and engage with Mr. Yu, all of which were unsuccessful. While I will not be recounting all the information provided in the video, I do want to highlight some key points from the response and investigation. In speaking with neighbors, officers learned the suspect was reclusive, rarely came outside, and had thrown trash, including bleach bottles, into the yard that day. A neighbor also reported odd behaviors by the suspect, such as having a large quantity of charcoal, lighter fluid, and bleach delivered to the house months prior to this incident. Based on the totality of the circumstances, coupled with the occupant's unwillingness to engage with police, officers remained concerned for the safety of the community and obtained a search warrant to recover any weapons from inside the home. 
Officers on scene assessed all available information and made a decision to use available police resources, our SWAT team and negotiators, to execute the search warrant to safely resolve this incident. Given the information available, including that the suspect had access to combustible flares, steps were taken to mitigate potential risk of a fire at the scene, including turning the gas off at the home. While we had no indication that the house was going to explode, precautionary measures were taken to mitigate any potential risk to protect the community and first responders. While the SWAT team attempted to execute the search warrant, negotiators continued to exhaust all efforts to establish communications with the suspect, including making announcements on the public address system and attempting phone calls and text messages. As you saw in the video, following the breach of the front door, Mr. Yu fired multiple shots inside the home. This marked a significant escalation by the suspect. Following Mr. Yu's actions, officers began deploying non-flammable, less lethal chemical munitions into the house in hopes of compelling him to surrender. A total of 16 munition rounds were deployed over a period of approximately eight and a half minutes. As SWAT members were deploying the munitions, there were pauses when the suspect sounded as though he was yelling back to officers. The last munition was deployed approximately one minute and 11 seconds prior to the explosion. The munitions deployed by officers were pepper spray and tear gas, so OC and CS, and both were dispersed in powder or liquid form. All munitions are non-pyrotechnic, which means they will not combust, explode, or start a fire. This incident highlights the unpredictable nature of law enforcement response. Our officers truly never know what is on the other side of a call, but they train extensively to be prepared for anything that may occur. Throughout the three hours and 40 minutes of this incident leading up to the explosion, our officers work collaboratively both internally and with our fire department partners using all available resources to try and take the suspect into custody and bring this event to a safe conclusion. Their thoughtful, professional, and strategic response to mitigate as many risks to the community as possible was exemplary. I recognize how devastating this incident was for our community, particularly people who lived on or near North Burlington Street. I can assure you that it was equally devastating for police officers and members of the first responder community. I am appreciative of the support we have received from the community and our partner agencies. Finally, I am incredibly proud of the work of all of our officers and first responders. They worked hard to resolve this incident safely, mitigate as many potential risks as they could, and even after the explosion, showed deep care and concern for each other and the surrounding community as they did not know what, if anything, may occur next. Their courage, diligence, professionalism, decision-making, restraint, and proactive risk mitigation strategies undoubtedly save lives, and I am incredibly proud to wear the same uniform as them. Again, thank you for being here with us, and I'll now turn it over to our Fire Chief, Dave Pavlitz. Thank you, Chief Penn. The partnership between Arlington County Public Safety Agencies were essential during the response. Police and fire department units coordinated activities before the explosion to keep the occupants, residents, and all the first responders safe. Several fire department units were staged right around the corner for quick deployment and were in constant communications with Unified Command. We were ready to assist the police department's operations. After the house exploded, units responded to confine and extinguish the fire. About 15 fire units, along with over 60 firefighter personnel, quickly responded to the scene that night. Much of the structure collapsed into the first floor and basement. The exterior fire to the adjacent occupancies were quickly extinguished. Most of the fire in the exploded duplex was extinguished around 10.30 p.m. Washington Gas Company responded to shut off the damaged natural gas service. Medical units continually assessed all first responders for injuries. There were no medical transports to the hospital that night. Arlington County Fire Marshals, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Fire Arson Explosive Task Force, and the CERT team 
process investigated the incident during the following two days. The cooperative effort between Arlington County Police Department and Federal Bureau of Investigations did not detect any active or ongoing threat to the community after the explosion. Several injured first responders were released or treated for injuries during the following weeks from this incident. I commend all responders who immediately cared for each other, quickly protected the community, and safely addressed the hazards after the explosion. We also feel and share the concern for the residents in the community impacted by this event. I'd like to introduce resident agent in charge, Yanis Doropis from the Bureau of Alcohol, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. He will discuss the joint team's investigation and the cause and origin of the explosion and fire. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Yana Starupas, and I am the resident agent in charge for the ATF Washington Fields Division's Falls Church Field Office and the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia Arson and Explosives Task Force. On December 4th, 2023, ATF responded to the house explosion and fire at 844 North Burlington Street, Arlington, Virginia, to support our partners and the community throughout this incident. Many community members and law enforcement partners were affected by this unfortunate tragedy. We empathize with all that were negatively impacted by this event. Over the past several months, the ATF's DC and Northern Virginia Arson and Explosives Task Force worked diligently alongside our partners, the Arlington County Police Department and the Arlington County Fire Department to complete a post-blast investigation and an origin and cause determination for this incident. ATF personnel and resources that were utilized in this investigation were certified fire investigators, certified explosive specialists, bomb technicians, explosive detection canine teams, accelerant detection canine teams, laboratory chemists, and the ATF National Laboratory. After a thorough and comprehensive investigation was conducted, our investigators determined the incident was an intentional act by the decedent and has been classified as incendiary. The investigators determined that the event originated in the basement of the residence, that the decedent applied gasoline in the basement of the residence and ignited the gasoline vapors with a competent ignition source. Although we are not able to determine what the specific ignition source was, the likely competent ignition sources that were identified by our investigators were multiple shotguns, a pistol, multiple flare guns, and or the use of matches or a lighter. The ATF Washington Field Division will continue to pledge our full support and partnership with the Arlington County Police, the Arlington County Fire Department and the community should they, they need any further assistance relating to this investigation. Thank you, and now I'd like to turn it over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation Special Agent in Charge, Vermani. Good morning, I'm Sanjay Vermani, Special Agent in Charge of the FBI Washington Field Office's Counterterrorism Division. I want to thank Chief Penn and Chief Povitz, Povitz for the opportunity to participate in this briefing on the house explosion that occurred in December last year. The FBI assisted and coordinated with Arlington County and our federal partners on the investigation into how this house explosion occurred and the individual who caused it. Through the investigation to date, we have determined that the occupant of the house, James Yu, acted alone. This was an isolated incident. There was no nexus to terrorism, and there is no continuing threat to this community. We also confirmed that Mr. Yu had previously communicated with the FBI via phone calls, online tips, 
and letters over the years. These communications were primarily complaints about alleged frauds that he believed were perpetrated against him. No FBI investigation, investigations were opened up based on these complaints. I want to thank our law enforcement and public safety partners for their collaboration on this investigation and our continuing joint efforts to keep our communities safe. Thank you.